This video has been sponsored by Rec Room. Hey guys, in this video we're going to cover 15 mods that are available for Forge on the latest version of Minecraft. Unlike my other videos, these mods aren't new. Instead, a lot of them are quite popular, but I've never covered them before. So, I thought this would be a good opportunity to expose you to some of the mods you might have missed. But first, a word from our sponsor. If you don't know what Rec Room is, it's a free-to-play game that I really think you'd like. It's available on iPhone, iPad, Android, PlayStation, Xbox, Steam, and even VR. Don't worry if your friends are on other platforms as you can still play together thanks to the built-in crossplay. In Rec Room, you can express yourself with your avatar and hang out with friends either inside your personal dorm room or in many of the public spaces. There are over 12 million rooms to explore, which are made by people just like you. In these rooms, you can meet new people, play games like paintball and dodgeball, or even take part in large quests, which feature multiple acts. There's always events happening in Rec Room too, where you can watch live comedy nights, attend virtual parties, and even be taught some new skills. With the party system, you can easily travel between rooms with your friends, and the built-in voice chat will allow you to communicate with other people globally, or just with your party. If you're feeling creative, you can try creating your own worlds too, where you can build anything you'd like. So come and join Rec Room, it's completely free, and you can find the link in the description below. Who knows, maybe you'll make some friends for life. I want to thank Rec Room for sponsoring this video. The first mod we're going to cover is Twigs. It primarily adds decorative items, like some new blocks. It includes polished amethyst, cobblestone bricks, mossy bricks, bamboo thatch, polished tuff, calcite, and a few others. Bamboo can be placed inside a stone cutter to strip it, which also makes some nice decorative blocks. Some new lamp blocks are included, which there are four variants of. Tables can be made from each wood type, and because they're one block high, they're easy to display things on. There's three new loot bags provided with this mod, which can be dropped by the wandering trader, witches, and pillagers. When you right-click them, they can be opened to provide you with loot, as well as relics. There's a lot of relics to cover, as there's over 15, so I'll mention some of the most interesting ones you can obtain. The hammer from the Farlands will knock enemies around, making it great for combat. By using the Flute of Friendship, you'll get the Hero of the Village effect. The Mirror of Abundance will replace the item in your offhand slot. A Flask of Adaption will give you an effect you need like Water Breathing if you're drowning or Fire Resistance if you're on fire. It's able to adapt to you. The Whip of Taming will allow you to ride creatures, even enemy ones, whereas the Ravager Horn will give you the Bad Omen effect. There's a lot more, and you won't always get relics as a drop. If you used to play Galacticraft, then you'll like Beyond Earth. After installing it, you can start building rockets inside the NASA workbench, which will allow you to explore distant planets or just enter the overworld orbit. It includes new materials and tools too, like steel, calorite, and dash. You need to generate power, which can be done with solar panels, so you can power machines like the compressor, fuel refinery, and oxygen loader. Once your rocket is built and fueled, you can put on your spacesuit and choose your destination. You can visit places like the Moon, Mars, Venus, and Mercury, or even enter the Proxima Centauri system. Now you can build a rover, plant a flag, and start building your space bases. I don't know how I never covered Backpacked before, a mod by Mr. Crayfish. With it, you can craft the backpack from six rabbit hide, two string, and an iron ingot. There is a slot for the backpack, so it can be worn on your back without taking up the chest plate. By default, it only offers 9 slots, but that can be easily configured, and you can quickly open the backpack by pressing the B key. One cool feature is that it comes with different challenges, which when completed will allow you to change the appearance of the backpack so it can look like a cardboard box, trash can, bamboo basket, and more. Wandering traders will also spawn with a backpack, and they can be pickpocketed as well as other players. With Piglin expansion installed, you can find some new structures, with the first being the Piglin ship. You can find lots of gold blocks here to collect. There's also Piglin fortresses in the nether, as well as the refuge, a small structure in the overworld. A new material is Piglin divinity, which comes as gems in essence. The first item it can be turned into is a Piglin divinity staff, 
which summons lightning as it attacks. Or it can be used to make Definity Netherite ingots, which is stronger than regular Netherite. There's also some new Basalt tile blocks, which look pretty nice. Shrine structures will spawn new structures across all three dimensions. At the time of this video, there's over 25 structures included, which really range in size. You can come across temples, houses, towers, shrines, and more. One of the biggest locations I've come across is the harbor, which would make a great place to set up a village, although it would be disastrous if it caught fire. There's multiple player houses to come across, which you could take ownership of and live in. One even comes in the form of a modern villa, which is quite surreal to come across, and even has a rooftop pool. Though I prefer the tall player house instead. Some locations have hostile mobs too, like the infested prison. A simple bod is equipment compare. When you hold shift on an item, you'll see another tooltip appear, which shows the item you have equipped. That way you can quickly compare items without having to hover over them individually. The Undergarden is a new dimension located below Bedrock. To enter it, you'll need to create a portal frame out of stone sticks and activate it with a catalyst. Inside the dimension, you'll find 12 biomes like the Dense Forest, Dead Sea, Frost Fields, and Mushroom Bog. These are all made up of new blocks, too. There's lots of new creatures to discover, like the Rotwalker, Forgotten Guardian, and Stoneborn. But in total, there's over 15 entities in the Undergarden. If you enter the catacombs, you'll find a large, sprawling dungeon below the surface. There's more to the mod, like in new armor and tools, new blocks, and music discs. Installing brutal bosses will make exploring in Minecraft more difficult. Whenever you come across a dungeon, it can now have a boss spawning in them, which there are 22 variants of. They all take the form of vanilla entities, but they might be wearing armor and have some special abilities. Bosses will be able to charge targets, shoot explosives, do knockback effects, and more. They won't spawn in just vanilla dungeons either. They can spawn anywhere a dungeon loot chest does, so you can even find them in locations provided by shrine structures. But it's also compatible with lots of other popular mods. I did actually cover cold bolts about a year ago, but it's seen a lot of updates since then. These creatures can be found living underground in dens, which there are a lot of different designs of. Some are big, and some are small, and some are even themed around pirates. A lot of them will be warriors who will defend their den, but some can be traded with by giving them emeralds where you might receive some kobold tools or potions. Or you can trade with the pirate captain, who will accept items like gold tools. Kobolds can also be found zombified in dungeons, or as drowned in the swamps. You can play with Minecraft Comes Alive on the latest version of Minecraft 2. The first change is that villagers are more human-like, and each has a different skin. Over time, you can build relationships with each villager, whether it be casual or more flirty. If you go down the partnership route, you can even get married and have children who are able to do chores. With a blueprint, you can manage your village so that buildings can be added. You can view family trees and even introduce taxes. There's already mods available to improve on Minecraft's lush caves. In these biomes, you can find the Moss Walker. They're passive creatures and don't have much use yet. From moss, you can also create moss bricks, as well as stairs and walls. Moss can even be turned into horse armor. The propeller hat gives an alternative method of travel and requires power to operate. There's multiple tiers and they're powered with forge energy. They have some cool sounds and animations, but I think they're better for moving vertically than horizontally, so they might work better with an elytra. Biome Makeover improves the mushroom fields, badlands, swamp, and dark forest, with more coming in the future. It doesn't just change the terrain generation, it implements all new blocks, items, and creatures. There's cowboys, owls, stone golems, moths, dragonflies, and more with some even being tameable. The most recent update overhauled the Dark Forest, as well as the Woodland Mansion, which is a lot larger with a more interesting interior. With crude cladding, leather armor can now be upgraded to be cladded. In the Badlands, you can find the Ghost Town, 
which feels like you've gone back to the Wild West. Bandits can be found on horseback in the Badlands, which are pillagers dressed like cowboys. And that's probably not even a quarter of the content provided by this mod. If you're looking to overhaul biomes in a more immersive way, then definitely give this mod a try. Another location you can now come across is the Orc Camp, a small area infested with orcs and goblins. They're hostile creatures, so they're going to attack you instantly. There's a few variants to the camp, depending on the biome they spawn in. Orcs mostly drop teeth, which can be combined with leather to make orc teeth armor. There are some nice decorative items included with this mod too, which could be good for role-playing. More babies will add baby variants to more of Minecraft's creatures. You can find them spawning naturally, like they would in the vanilla game, although it also works if you use spawn eggs on an adult mob. There's baby variants of 21 creatures and includes pillagers, creepers, blaze, spiders, piglin brutes, skeletons, and more. With rare ice, you might occasionally stumble across a loot that's been frozen in the ice. By breaking it, you'll receive the items inside, which might even include weapons and armor. That covers this list. I'll be back soon with another Forge video for this version of Minecraft, where I'll be looking at newer mods instead. So make sure to subscribe and check out my channel, as I've covered hundreds of other mods.